Hi. Welcome to the Happy Resonance Commission. Now we are discussing about uh, another application of crystal field stabilization energy. Crystal field stabilization energy. Now the second one is lattice energy. Now our topic is lattice energy. So the definition of lattice energy, we discussed the very basic concept of the lattice energy. Now let us take the example of a metal ion and a non-metal gaseous particle or anything, metal and non-metal will give their corresponding ions, will give their corresponding ions whenever the cation and anion coming together, combined together to give one mole of a solid that is ionic crystal solid that is nothing but a ionic crystal, it releases some energy. Whenever the amount of uh, energy required to form the one mole of a solid, it to form the one mole of a solid or ionic compound is nothing but a lattice energy. Is nothing but a lattice energy. Now here it is a solid compound. So solids generally represented in solid or ionic compound. So which formed by the ionic bond that means uh, electrostatic interaction. Electrostatic interaction. So in generally electrostatic interactions of a solids it forms the uh, like a three dimensional arrangement three dimensional arrangement so this three dimensional arrangement it occupies some space this, this is called a lattice this is called a lattice now here it forms the one mole of solid how much energy required that is nothing but lattice energy that is nothing but lattice energy that means uh, to form the three dimensional crystal form to form the three dimensional crystal form it requires some energy that is nothing but lattice energy now with the help of a born, born hammer cycle you can easily find out the lattice energy now let us take the metal and uh, halogen to form the metal plus uh, x minus iron plus heat of the formation plus heat of the formation now we will take the half of the mole of uh, halogen here. so generally metal undergoing the uh, halogen is a gaseous particle but uh, metal is not a gaseous particle that's why solid it undergoes this gaseous particle it want to be undergoes the gaseous particle now whenever the solid directly converted into gaseous that is a sublimation that the process is called uh, sublimation in the first step it undergoes the sublimation it gives the metal gaseous particle now the second step here x2 it decomposes that means it dissociated dhd that is nothing but dissociated it gives x it gives x half of the x2 that means it gives the x itself it is x now whenever metal lost their electron that means ionization energy the loss of electron is nothing but ionization energy it gives metal cations it gives metal cations here the anion the addition of energy the addition of energy, the energy required to add the electron to its uh, ground state of gaseous molecule is nothing but electron gaining enthalpy. It, electron gaining enthalpy. It, it again it gives uh, x minus. Whenever the cation and the anion combinedly together to form the ionic crystal, it releases some energy that is called lattice energy. Here it releases some energy that is called a lattice energy. So this is the lattice energy of formula. Now the born haber cycle, born haber cycle will give the information. So we know that the born haber cycle which depends upon the Hessler, which depends upon the Hessler. According to Hessler, so the process of heat of the formation either it takes one step or multiple steps both are the equal both are equal now with the help of bonus bond haber cycle we can calculate the lattice energy of the transition metals we can calculate the lattice energy of transitional metal elements okay now however so lattice energy by using the magnitude charge it have so several factors so the first factor is magnitude charge magnitude charge so lattice energy simply it is denoted by nu nu is directly proportional to the charge over the cation or anion cation or anion now another factor is the size of the ions size of the ions now u mu u is inversely proportional to the r cation r minus now here r minus is negligible r minus is negligible generally uh, lattice energy finally what we conclude lattice energy is inversely proportional to the size of cation is inversely proportional to the size of cation 
size of cation. So in this relation, which tells about the lesser the size, lesser size of the cation, it having the higher the lattice energy. Higher size of the cation, it means lesser the lattice energy. Now again another theorem which which helps to develop the lattice energy of transition element. Nowadays, uh, all the elements lattice energy cannot be determined, all the complexes. Now, that's why the trend cannot be observed clearly. But uh, some of the books, they are given in very well-known manner. We are followed that uh, uh, a good inf information regarding the standard books. Now, again, what is the bond Haber cycle? It is, a, it is indirect method. Now, another one is Born land, born land cycle. The second one is born land equation. By using the born land equation, we can conclude that the transitional metal elements lattice energy. So, with the help of a born land equation, so from smaller size, uh, from larger size cation to lesser size cation, it increases smoothly. It increases smoothly. So, from the born land equation, so here the born land equation. And that is a bond land lattice energy will give the information about a minus Avogadro number and a bond exponential a bond exponential modeling constant with z plus and z minus this are, these are the like a magnitude charges by r naught into 1 minus 1 by m into 1 minus 1 by m now here n naught is Avogadro number z a is modeling constant with respect to the corresponding crystal here z plus z minus is magnitude charge of cation as well as n n here n is the bond land component bond land exponent sorry now here r naught is the interionic distances interionic distances now with the help of lattice energy we can conclude that lattice energy is directly proportional to the magnitude charge of the cation and anion with inversely proportional to the inversely proportional to the interionic distances interionic distances with the help of this formula we can conclude that lesser size of the cation lesser size of the cation which will have the higher lattice energy higher size of the anion lesser lattice energy higher size of the cation lesser lattice energy with the help of uh, this bond land equation we can imagine a smooth increment of uh, lattice energy a smooth increment of uh, lattice energy let us take the detransitional detransition metal elements now the, we can start with uh, our calcium scandium titanium vanadium chromium manganese iron cobalt nickel copper zinc we have the 10 elements all are the plus 2 all are the plus 2 state it presents at a plus 2 state chromium plus 2 manganese plus 2 iron plus 2 nickel plus 2 copper plus 2 zinc plus 2 Okay, now here all the here all the 11, 11 cations with our uh, plus two or plus three, which are uh, which follows the their uh, ionic uh, halides or uh, whatever it components, whatever it components, it it expected from the a smooth increment, a smooth increment. So due to the here left to right uh, in the period left to right size decreases. That means uh, lesser size. Higher the lattice energy. We know that lattice energy is inversely proportional to the radius or uh, interionic distances. Interionic distances. Lesser size of the zinc plus 2 will have the higher lattice energy. Higher size of the calcium plus 2 will have the lesser lattice energy. With the help of lattice energy, we can imagine like this. We can imagine like this. But uh, it uh, according to the bond born Haber cycle, it is not uh, expected. It is not uh, expected. Now it is also deviated. Uh, deviated from born land equation born land equation that is also can help full de determine the deviation of born land equation is our cfse value so according to cfse value scandium plus 2 means uh, here it is a d1 configuration that means uh, it having the 0 0.4 delta o now here titanium plus 2 means 0 0.8 delta o now here vanadium plus 2 means here vanadium plus 2 means uh, 1.2 delta o 1.2 delta o here the chromium plus 2 means 
zero point six delta O. Here, metal halides which forms the less. Uh, let let us assume it is a weak field complexes. That means high spin complexes. Now here, Mn plus two, it it is equal to the zero. Now iron plus two, it means uh, it is equal to the zero point four. Now cobalt plus two, zero point eight. Nickel plus two, one point two. One point two. Now again, copper plus two, it is zero point six. Now the zinc plus two will give rise to zero. Will give rise to zero. Let us imagine this is our graph. So now we connect the all those uh, all those uh, like uh, atoms. Now we will get a, a double humped curve like previous uh, hydration energy method. And now we will get a, a double humped curve whenever it it is uh, belongs to the weak field again. It is belongs to the weak field. That means uh, high spin complexes. High spin complexes. Whenever it ha it is belongs to the strong field complexes. Uh, Strong field means low spin complexes. In case of low spin, D1 configuration never changes. D1 CFSE value same. D2 CFSE value also same. D3 CFSE value also same. But in case of D4, it it changed. D4 means here 1.6, 1.6. Now D5 means 2.0. D5 means 2.0. Now D6 means 2.4, 1.6, 2.0. 2.4 delta O. Now D D6 again D7 means I think D7 1.8 1.8. Now let us assume it. Okay. Now here D D7 is 1.8. D8 is as usual. D8 is as usual. So this graph is belongs to strong field complexes. That means uh, low spin complexes. Low spin complexes. So they are originally they are given in the different different type of molecules. Uh, let us take the example nickel H2O six times plus three plus two. Again Mn H2O six times plus two. Now, however, here the nickel plus two, my Mn plus two, nickel plus two present over there at the top of top of the graph. Now, Mn plus two present over here. So these two compare that again. The lattice energy of nickel is more. Generally, lattice energy of nickel plus two is more with a their higher CFSE value. Higher CFSE value. Just a minute. Now, however, in case of strong field complexes, let us take the another example. Which is nothing but Ni H two O six times plus two, Ni like a Cn six times minus two. Here it means nickel plus four configuration. Nickel plus four. Nickel plus four means nickel plus two here D eight configuration. Let us take the uh, D D D configuration. Let us consider D one D two D three D four D five D six D seven D eight D nine D ten. Nickel plus four means D six, which which is low spin complexes, higher oxidation state. Even though it having the halide and it is a uh, low uh, low spin complexes. So now here nickel plus four means D six configuration. Nickel plus two means D eight configuration. So our our imagination nickel plus two it shown the higher value. It shown the higher value. But nickel plus six also it shown the higher value at the low spin complexes. At the low spin complexes, nickel nickel CN six is higher value when compared to nickel H two O six times plus two. Now let us take the another example. If uh, they are given the like this complexes, candium H two O six times plus two again, uh, like a uh, nickel, uh, not only nickel, cobalt H two O six times plus two. Now Mn H two O six times plus. Now in this case, so these three, so in in these three examples, so cobalt plus two present over the top of the top of the graph. The, after that, manganese. We will get the manganese here. It is cobalt. Sorry, here it is cobalt, manganese. Again, the third one is scandium. Scandium present over the bottom of the group. Bottom of the group. Now, with the help of this graph, we can imagine the their lattice energy of any crystal, any complex compound, any complex compound. Now, let us discuss with uh, some other halides <laughs> lattice energy. Halides lattice energy. So 
in Uhi, they are given in very clear cut manner of the halides uh, lattice energy. Now let us take the lattice energy versus B complexes. So here, scandium plus 2, titanium plus 2, vanadium plus 2, chromium plus 2, manganese plus 2, iron plus 2, cobalt plus 2, nickel plus 2, copper plus 2, zinc plus 2. So now we have the uh, calcium plus 2 also. Now in case of uh, iodine, bromine, it shown like this. First, uh, first uh, let us take the example of iodine. Now we will get the iodine value with the help of bond land equation. We imagine like this. We imagine like this. But uh, with the help of bond Habo cycle, we can uh, we can assume that there are some deviations are present at uh, with the help of a born Haber cycle. Now this point, I'll give the another explanation. So according to born Lander equation, we will get a smooth increasing curve, a smooth increasing curve. But in the with the help of born born Haber cycle, we can imagine here there are uh, some deviations are present. So those deviations are explained by the CFSC value. Now here, so scandium plus two present over there. Titanium plus 2 present over there, vanadium plus 2 present over there, here chromium plus 2 also present due to the dynamic Jantler distortion in case of a metal plus 2 plus 3 configuration. So a manganese plus 2 it shown lower the configuration. Thereafter nickel plus 2, sorry iron plus 2, cobalt plus 2, nickel plus 2, here D9 copper also, copper is also higher, copper is also higher when compared to nickel, here copper is more. Now we will connect the graph like this. So this is the iodine curve of lattice energy. Iodine curve of lattice energy with metal plus two configuration. Now the bromine we will get like this. So some of the deviations are there. They are given in a very clear manner of the those deviations. So like a bromine, similar way we will get the chlorine curve. Now we will get the like a iodine, bromine, chlorine. This is the fluorine. Now fluorine having the highest uh, lattice energy. Now I'll give the clear cut image. So the, this is not correct for the learners. Okay, now it is the fluorine. We will get the fluorine curve like this. So now here the lattice energies of uh, uh, different halides with metal plus 2 or plus 3 complexes we will get like this. Now the lattice energy graph like this. Fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine. So maybe the, the question came from the CSAR gate uh, like this also. So the lattice energy of a halides, halides with metal plus 2 complexes uh, either uh, fluorine to iodine or iodine to fluorine. So fluorine is greater than that of chlorine, chlorine is greater than that of bromine, bromine is greater than that of iodine. So now in this manner we can easily calculate the lattice energy. In this manner we can easily calculate the lattice energy. With the help of these two graphs, uh, they are given in uh, any tricky manner. We solve the every example within fraction of seconds I think. If you know the concept of um, double humped curve, so it is a double humped curve. Now here 1, 2, 1, 2. 1, 2, 1. So those are the points. So it is the double humped curve. Now we will take the 11, 11 elements, uh, not 10. Here uh, we will take the calcium plus 2 also. That's why here calcium plus 2, scandium plus 2, titanium plus 2, vanadium plus 2. Now chromium plus 2, magnesium plus 2, iron, cobalt, nickel, copper, zinc. Now we will take the 10 examples. Those 10 examples like this. Now here with the help of uh, silver satkin, it is higher than that of vanadium plus 3. Iron plus 2, higher than that of vanadium plus 3. Now this is the very easiest method to find the lattice energy of uh, metal clusters or coordination complexes. Now thank you for watching.